All right, greetings. Welcome in. It's Better's Last Stand, show number 109, coming to you from the Pine Room Watchdog Studios in downtown Wheeling. Uh, I wish I would, could say getting you ready for high school football action this evening on the Watchdog here on a Friday, but that's not going to be the case. We got these uh, ongoing issues with the high school football playoffs and the injunctions that are being filed by teams and all the appeals and uh, potentially going to the Supreme Court of West Virginia here at some point. So we know absolutely nothing. All we do know is, sadly, we are not going to have for you Wheeling Central in Chapmanville, nor will we have Spring Mills and Wheeling Park because those games are not played, uh, being played tonight, and they may not be played, or tomorrow. Central is going to be played tomorrow, Saturday, but uh, they're not going to be played at all this weekend, and we have no idea what's going to what's going to become. Uh, there is some playing games that were scheduled to be played, and one of the judges, a lower court judge, ruled that that they would do play-in games, and that has not happened. And uh, whether or not we see those uh, or be played or not, we have no clue. So stay tuned to the Watchdog and Metro News for more information about what exactly is uh, going on there with the West Virginia State High School football playoffs. They also got a mess for volleyball as well. So the WVSSAC continues to shoot themselves in the foot. They wouldn't have any feet left. They would have shot off all their toes, and uh, they'd be walking around like peg double peg leg amputee pirates. And uh, it's uh, it's a sad state of affairs there. So we're very sorry to hear that happening. We were hoping to bring you uh, high school football action this evening on the Watchdog Network, but that is on hold at this time. We have no idea what the future schedule will hold and whether or not this actually makes it to the docket of the Supreme Court of West Virginia. Uh, stay tuned. We shall see uh, what happens here in the very uh, near future with the WVSSAC and the high school football playoffs, but stay tuned to the Watchdog. We will have those uh, when, in fact, Wheeling Park and Wheeling Central are in playoff action. We will have those games for you here on the WatchdogNetwork.com. We're getting close to getting our Watchdog Network basketball scheduled together as well, so that'll be coming out in the uh, Soon to be, uh, I guess, uh, mid mid fall, mid uh, November. I guess it is in uh, into December. So winter right around the corner, and basketball season is uh, upon us. We have NBA, of course. We have college basketball underway as well. All right, recra- recapping betters last stand uh, was a strong week for us. We were up over twenty nine and a half units, so plus twenty nine fifty five on the week. College football wasn't our best, that is for sure, but we continue to uh, try to scratch it out. Every once in a while, we have a really good week. We have a bunch of uh, 500 mediocre weeks, and then we, uh, you know, come up come up with a nice, uh, you know, 80 percentage, 80 uh, percent win week. But that was not the case last week. Six and seven in college football. We were six and four in the NFL. Six two and two in English Premier League soccer, which we continue to do pretty well with. CFL, we were 2-1. and one. We also have a future ticket alive on that one. In the Champions League, we were 2-1 and one on the tail end of our half. Of, we gave out half the Champions uh, plays on the front end of the show, half on the back. So uh, when those were concluded on air last week, we uh, came out 2-1 and one in those. Joey Logano cashes for us. Nice winner there in NASCAR. If you're not used to hearing about NASCAR on this portion of the program during the Watchdog Network portion of the program, you can check us out at the Pine Room Studios. On our YouTube page, you can go to pineroomstudios.com and find every single episode of Better's Last Stand. This happens to be uh, episode 109, so you can hear the full episodes. Normally, uh, we have uh, two or three segments. We usually we used to have a racing segment with our guy Sam from Upper St. Clair, but he's uh, been uh, unable to make it due to uh, some work issues over the recent weeks. So Sam hasn't been able to be with us, so we've been doing... NASCAR in the front end of the program, but we're going to converge everything into one this week because we don't have any soccer this week. We have very little Canadian football left, um, very little hockey, and I'm um, just getting back into town, so I'm just getting settled in, and I'm a little bit disorganized today. So try to get you some winners, but we shall see. Recapping things again, Bl- uh, Brian Blaney was a winner last week, so we had that a good one, but we follow it right up with Joey Logano, 14-1 to to win the NASCAR championship. We also had him to win the race, top five and 10 as well. So a good one there. We had uh, a good payout there. That was part of the plus twenty nine fifty five that we cashed on the week, and uh, we cashed a couple more uh, season long futures last week as well. Live tickets. We have the Toronto Argonauts at plus three fifty. They are in the CFL finals. Uh, NBA. If you saw this the other day, crazy. We don't talk NBA on there very much, but wanted to at least mention this. Um, every couple of weeks, I'll recap the ATS, the best ATS teams and the over under teams, those kinds of trends. But we don't talk a whole lot about the NBA because it's just really, really difficult to follow, really difficult to watch. And uh, player personnel, it's really hard for me to give out plays on the NBA uh, because you just don't know who's going to play on a, on a nightly basis, which is just unthinkable in professional sports. But the Atlanta Hawks, 
a 16-point dog against the Celtics the other night. They won 117-116. to They were $9 on the money line. So be very leery of those large, large favorites. College basketball, as we said last week, is underway. The number movements are still cashing in a very, very high percentage. I'd say about the ones that I've played, about 78% of those big line moves on the totals or the sides where you're seeing a team open as an 11-point favorite. They're bet up to 14. If you can get in on that as the line moves, uh, they're covering those numbers. Same with, same with the totals. Opens 146, gets bet up to 151. Uh, those numbers are moving. So that would be a play on the over. Uh, but you, you really... Study these lines early. Look at them. The first thing, if you have time, check them out. First thing in the morning, start looking to see what they did overnight, whether they moved a point or two. And then by the time the day ends, you're looking at three, four, five, six point moves here. So you want to be on those as quickly as possible. But college basketball is a very, very, very lucrative opportunity for you this time of year as football is still the main focus of every bookmaker there is. And the college basketball game gets forgotten about a little bit. And uh, there's 150 games out there some nights of the week, and especially Saturdays, although this early season with the tournaments and some of the out-of-conference things, maybe not so many, but uh, it's a it's really good. You can find value there, no question about it. As I mentioned, Joey Logano takes the title in NASCAR. That is the end of the NASCAR season. He wins at Phoenix, holding off Ryan Blaney 14-1 to to win that. We gave that one back oh, probably six, six, seven weeks ago. Uh, we told you Blaney and Lagana were great, great buy-in opportunities to win the championship because all they needed to do was qualify for those final races, and they did do that. So we got leg one down, and then it was leg two. They didn't get eliminated. Then they qualified for the final race. Both guys were live going into Phoenix, and they run one, two. So a strong NASCAR season in the books, I would say. I'd give it a seven out of seven and a half out of ten. It was a good season, not a great season. Not incredible amount of drama, um, but some of the races were pretty good. And overall, I like what NASCAR is doing. They're growing the sport. Michael Jordan being involved obviously helps it quite a bit. If you're interested in more NASCAR talk, F1 talk, and IndyCar talk, uh, be sure and go back and listen to our previous uh, Better's Last Stand shows. Again, you can find those at pineroomstudios.com, at Pine Room Studios on our YouTube page. You can follow us at BLS underscore PRP, at the Pine Room Studios for everything else that you want to check out for Better's Last Stand. The uh, Pine Cellar Girls, the Soup and Stuff. The, uh, he hasn't done a Soup and Stuff in a while. He's, he's, he's such a fast-moving guy, Soup. You just never know where he is. Maybe he has. Maybe he just hasn't got him out yet. And then, of course, the regular podcast and our Watchdog Network radio show that comes to you on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. we got Football Friday today. We, won't be, we weren't at Gumby's because it was uh, the weather's starting to turn a little bit, but maybe we will venture back out there, and there's no real football games to talk about. So, We'll be talking. Uh, we, we we will be talking about this in the coming weeks as we get you ready for whenever the high school playoffs may actually come back here in the state of West Virginia. But racing circuits, two of the three are done. We got three more weeks of Formula One racing. They are at Las Vegas on uh, next week, so we're off one more week, and then we have the Qatari and Abu Dhabi. So we end in the Middle East in two of the richest areas in the world. Actually, Qatar is the richest country in the world, and Abu Dhabi uh, not far behind there in the UAE. So good stuff there on on the uh, on the uh, horizon for F1, and we uh, will put all three major racing circuits to bed here in uh, three or four weeks. So that'll be sad, but it won't be long before it'll be spring, and it will go fast, and we'll be ready for uh, March Madness and racing to get started back up. All right, hockey. Let's talk a little hockey. We don't usually do that here on the Watchdog segment of the program. It's usually reserved for the early part of the show. But uh, first period data, first period, second period, third period. If you're not familiar with these, these are the totals. These are strong, strong trends. They have been for the last two to three years. They've really taken off the instant gratification. The people love to bet these first period overs and unders has really become a popular market. And now you're seeing uh, the value of the second periods and the third periods starting to catch up a tad with the first periods. You were starting to get the first periods juice to the moon, which means that you had to find creative ways to figure out uh, to, to make money here without um, laying a ton. So what you can do is you can round robin these. I recommend that. Again, I'm not a parlay person. But round robining them from time to time, I think, is a good idea and a, and a good way to do it because these are very, very strong trends. Let's go through first period over trends so far this year. You have the Vegas Golden Knights, 12 and 4 to the over in the first period. The Washington Capitals, 11 and 4 over in the first period. These are one and a half goals in the first period. So you need two goals to cash these. The Florida Panthers, 11 and 5 in the first period. 
Second period overs. The Florida Panthers again, 14 and 2. Wow, what a run. I think they're I think since last week's show, I think they were 10 and 2. I think they've got four straight. So there you go, right there. These percentages very very strong. Are they guarantees? No, but they're 80 percent or above. And uh, anybody will take those uh, if you can get them. Minus 160, minus 165, you'll give up sometimes. But, hey, that's okay. You can even find adjusted ones. Go over two if you want to get uh, a better price. Buffalo Sabres, 13-3 and three to the over in the second period. A Toronto Maple Leafs, 14-4 and four over in the second period. Third period overs. VGK, Vegas Golden Knights, 15-1. and one. They've played 16 games. 15 of them have gone over in the third period. The Anaheim Ducks, 14-1. and one. LA Kings, 16-2. And, and the Montreal Canadiens, 14-2. and two. So great stuff there from the, from the uh, NHL. We'll continue to keep you apprised of those trends. I'll give you some uh, goal in the first 10 stuff as well. Um, those have been strong trends over the years, to, uh, especially when you get, get a team like Vegas where you get the energy in the building early. Uh, they're doing, they do a really good job of, of putting up a goal early on getting the crowd into the game. So NHL data is out there. You can find that stuff on Twitter and uh, check it out. And it, it's, worth, it's worth checking into because you're getting really, really high percentage clips here uh, on a bet, which you don't usually get. You don't usually get trends that are this this strong. ECHL, just bringing you up to date, the Nailer 6-3-1. and one. They got 13 points. Great start uh, to, to their season for them. I mean, uh, we'll be over there for the Nailers tonight and tomorrow as they take on Indy this weekend. They are second in the North Division. So uh, if you are if you like Nailers hockey, check us out on our Football Friday show. We actually have a segment called uh, Nailing It Down, which when Football Fridays are done with and football is over, we'll continue to have Nailing It Down each and every Friday. We'll have a member of the Nailers uh, media relations team, broadcasters, whoever, anybody that works in the front office, we could get anyone. Uh, we really, really enjoy having them on with us so check that out each and every week on the pine room watchdog show on fridays nailing it down a good segment about the all nice stuff and uh, all the things that go on at west bank arena to make a really really good event each and every game so again the nailers host the Indy fuel this weekend so check them out they are worth the uh the price of admission that is for sure stop over there and see our good friends at the Wheeling Nailers. Uh, CFL action, Canadian Football League. One game left, the Grey Cup. And I said last week, I thought they have a week off in between, but they don't. So they go right into the Grey Cup. It's Toronto and Winnipeg doing battle in the Grey Cup. The uh, champion will be the champion. Uh, or the, the winner will be the champion. Winnipeg, uh, I believe Winnipeg, if Winnipeg didn't win it last year, they won it the year before. I don't have my notes with me, but uh, Winnipeg and Montreal have won the last three between those two. Winnipeg minus eight and a half in this game, a total 50 and a half against Toronto. We have a future bet on Toronto, so I'm not going to do anything there. I'd lean Toronto plus that eight and a half, but I do like the game under the 50 and a half. I think these games tend to be a little bit um, more carefully played, and I think both teams are going to want to go out and uh, take care of business and figure out a way to get a win and get the Grey Cup, especially Toronto. Toronto could be a little bit sneaky here uh, to hang around in this game. I think that um, they, whenever you start seeing, you know, Winnipeg and Montreal, they've gotten most of the attention this season, but, uh, Toronto's just kind of went under the radar. They didn't have the greatest beginning of their season and this kind of fell into a little bit of a lull, but they're, uh, they're a dangerous team. And I think they're, they're going to, uh, compete pretty well there. And we hope we can catch that plus 350 ticket that we gave you out a few weeks ago. As I said, no soccer this week. I know that'll make some of you cry. Some of you are very happy. EPL and Champions League are on international break right now. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about that. Uh, we we had Brentford come in last week. We had Brighton come in at a nice price for us last week. So we were 6-2-2 uh, two and two in our EPL plays. And that was actually with some very good plus price winners there continue to be pretty hot in the soccer and we had a solid week in the champions league so that'll be back at it here in a couple of weeks and we'll be looking forward to uh, another match day five five it's at least match day five in the in the champions league so pretty excited about that as we push on towards thanksgiving all right so bad beats i didn't have time to really parse through some of the bad beats that we had last week some of the games that we had were so bad it, it couldn't even uh they couldn't even really classify as a bad beat because we weren't even in contention so didn't matter uh but i wanted to mention the college football playoff i think already there's major flaws in the way that they're they're doing this the seeding in the um just the teams that are in the top 12 um it, it just it's it's quite incredible to me uh I, i'm still not certain who texas has beaten if anybody can let me know that 
uh, please uh, email us or go on the pineroomstudios.com. Send us a message on there. Call in the radio show on Fridays and Tuesdays. Let me know who has Texas beaten. And I'm not hating on Texas at all. I like Texas. I like their program. I respect their program. But they haven't beat anybody. They have beat literally nobody. So who are we saying that they're so good? How are they rated so high? You have Georgia, who absolutely went in there and thumped them on their home field. And I know Georgia's lost twice, but they've lost to Ole Miss and they've lost to Alabama, two playoff teams. Uh, so this is way backwards to me. They've got to stop making win-loss matter, just the number of wins and losses. If all the teams played the same schedule, then by all means, that's a great, great uh, met- metric to look at. But it isn't that way. Two lost teams can be better than undefeated teams. We see it all the time. There's there's no logic being applied here. And I know it's early, and they're probably hoping that a lot of this will sort itself out. But uh, I'm sick of these committees just messing things up. So that's the bad beat of the week. The WVSSAC right here at home in West Virginia, a disaster. They, they should... They should just be, everybody that's involved in them should resign immediately. And this college football playoff committee, if they get this wrong and they keep teams like Georgia out of there with two losses and you're putting in these one-loss bozo teams, Notre Dame lost to a mediocre, mediocre Northern Illinois team. They're not even good in the MAC, uh, And and, and they're, they're up there. I, I You cannot tell me that Georgia's not better than, obviously, Texas. They beat them head-to-head on the road. And Notre Dame. I mean, Georgia's a two-touchdown favorite against Notre Dame, in in my opinion. Um, I, I just this is this is messed up. It's really really bad. And I think you're you're seeing a situation where I know there's an SEC bias out there, but the SEC is going to deserve teams with three losses. These teams run a gauntlet. They have a really difficult schedule. I mean, you got Tennessee, who's really good now. You got Ole Miss, who's been good and has now has a defense to go along with their offense. I mean, these are now big big contenders along with Alabama and Georgia. Uh, and then you throw Texas in the mix. Dude, Texas has had a very easy schedule. Very, very easy. Not saying they're not a playoff team. By no means. They're absolutely a playoff team. But I don't think they should be as high as they are. I don't see how in the world, when you only have one loss difference, and a team like Georgia has only lost the teams who are ranked in that top 12, I don't see how in the world Texas is above Georgia. You cannot simply make it about wins and losses because they have not played the same teams. If Texas had to play... Alabama and Ole Miss, uh, I don't think they'd have one loss. So, anyway, poor job by the committee already. You're you're seeing, uh, you know, Indiana as a team that I know a lot of people are going to have questions about. SMU getting no love at all. SMU's got better ratings than Texas by far. If you go through the schedule and look at the teams they've played versus who Texas has played, SMU's better than Texas on paper. So, I, I don't understand. So, if you're using paper, Okay, if you're using eye test, okay, I'm not seeing that. Like, it's not adding up here. So let's hope this committee gets it together here in the coming weeks. Again, you're listening to the Better's Last Stand, show number 109. Unfortunately, no high school football action tonight on the Watchdog, but that's okay. We got some more sports to talk about, getting you ready for uh, an evening of probably uh, v and maybe some more Metro News stuff to kind of get you ready for maybe playoffs if we ever do do this. Some um, industry notes here. How about this? Argentina launching an investigation into potential illegal sports betting as a pro team, pro soccer team, started a YouTube influencer as their striker. So they actually started him in a league match, if you can believe this. This would be like uh, the like the Atlanta Falcons decided they were going to start job at quarterback one week. <laughs> like, yeah, that would probably draw some interest from people how they could do that so anyway argentina looking into that see if there's any improprieties jake paul mike tyson uh one person who works at bet mgm says that this is expected to be the biggest bet boxing match ever in mgm history that's a lot that's saying something yeah mike tyson back in his heyday i i find that hard to believe i think it's going to be a cool novelty item again on netflix tomorrow night not can take it or leave it i really don't care about this we will have it at the Wheeling Island Hotel Casino Racetrack and Sportsbook. If you're interested, go over there. You can watch it and wager on it. Uh, NFL Dogs in Week 10, 9, and 3 ATS. They were 8 and 12 to the under, too. So, solid week for the books. Patrick Mahomes, let me remind you of this before you start running to the window to bet Buffalo this week. Patrick Mahomes, 12, 1, and 1 ATS as a dog. He's won 11 of those outright. So, Kansas City, a current two-point dog to the Bills this weekend. Yeah, I'd be very careful. Best cover team so far in the NFL. The Lions seven and two. Steelers seven and two. Redskins seven two and one. Denver seven and three.
Cardinals seven and three, Indy seven and three, the Chargers six and three, and the Vikings six and three. Lopsided ticket counts. We go over these each and every week. Ninety percent of tickets were on the Minnesota Vikings last week. That was a winner. Eighty-six percent on the Falcons minus three and a half. We gave you that. The other side of that one, we had the Saints. That a loser for the Falcons. Eighty-six percent on the Bills minus three and a half. They get away. Uh, actually, they picked six Flacco early in that game and uh, ended up putting it to bed. Oh, the Colts hung around though for a while, but uh, Bills get it done minus the three and a half. Philadelphia minus seven against Dallas. Eighty-four percent. Was wrong on that. I thought Dallas would give a little bit better effort. They did not. And the 82% on the Chargers, minus 7.5. So those uh, big lopsided ticket counts in the NFL go 4-1 and one with the big percentages. So keep an eye on that one. Week 11, here are your big tickets uh, so far. 84% on the Green Bay Packers, minus 5.5. 83% on Houston. The Texans, minus 7.5. 79% on the Lions, minus 13. 79% on the Vikings. Minus six, 73% on the Bengals, plus one and a half, and 70% on the Colts, plus four. College football lopsided tickets from week number uh, 11. Let's go through those first. The results, 91% on Army, minus five and a half, a winner. 88% on Pitt, minus seven and a half. They lose outright. 88% on Miami, minus 11. I told you it was coming. I told you it was coming. Miami Hurricanes, just not good enough to be a playoff contender. Minus 11, lost outright to Georgia Tech. Could not stop them. The third down and fourth down converges for Georgia Tech in that game. Just abysmal if you're a defensive coordinator. I, I've never seen a defense uh, be able to get off the field um, in less. It, it take it, It's such a struggle to get off the field as Miami. It's really, really difficult to watch. 86% on Clemson. Minus 6.5, that was a winner. Iowa State took 84%. They were minus 3. They lost out, right? 84% on BYU. Minus 3.5, that was a loser. 84% percent on Boise. They were lucky to win. Minus the 24. That a loser. Minnesota Golden Gophers. 83% on them. Minus six. Loser. 81% on Georgia. Minus two and a half. That worried me last week. I said that I like Georgia, but we said whenever the public's getting involved, that's usually uh, time to get worried. So there you go. College. How about that? College had been pretty strong in these big, big ticket counts over the recent weeks, but they were not strong here this week as they go to Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, two and seven on those moves. Uh, the large percentage tickets in college football. So, you know, what that tells me is things are starting to to balance out. You got conference games. That's obviously a big, big part of this is you, you're finding teams that kind of know each other a wee bit better than the teams do out of conference. Uh, moving along here, episode 109 of Better's Last Stand. Listening to it here on the Watchdog Network. Again, sadly, not getting you ready for high school football action tonight as Wheeling Central and Wheeling Park both, both uh, on hold right now. The entire state playoffs are on hold in West Virginia. Uh, tomorrow, then, let me remind you, you can hear it right here on the Watchdog. It will be the Baylor Bears at WVU. It's a 4 o'clock kick. I believe the pregame comes on at 1 o'clock. And then the Browns are at the Saints at 1 o'clock on Sunday. You can hear both of those games right here on the Watchdog. All right, let's shift our focus over to pro football where people uh, still seem to really, really, really love this stuff. And uh, I had an opportunity to watch games uh, pretty much uninterrupted on Sunday. And yeah, there were some decent games. The Steeler game is a pretty good, pretty good to finish. Uh, but man, this is a really, this NFL is just, I don't know. It's just not that good of a product. And it just stuns me how many people still love it. So we continue to give you what you want though, here on betters last stand. And uh, let's go through the card here. All right. So we got the green Bay Packers at the Chicago bears. Currently the Packers minus five, five and a half, the total 40 and a half. Pretty much uh, that is the consensus total right now. The Bears have a lot of issues. They fired the offensive coordinator. Eberflus is under pressure. We told you all along Eberflus was a fraud. We gave you out the Bears under their season win total based on that and the fact that Caleb Williams was not going to be able to adjust to the NFL uh, as quickly as people maybe thought. While he had some decent performances, he's also had some very bad ones. And their offense has been dreadful over the last few weeks. I don't see how you can't play Green Bay here. I'm not very high on Green Bay either. I'm not a Jordan Love guy. Never have been. Thought maybe he proved me wrong. But now I'm starting to think maybe I was right about him. He's just okay. Not sure he's completely healthy. Maybe he is now after a little bit of time off. But uh, it's Packers or nothing here for me. And then possibly a play on the under here. I think uh, 
I think you could see the Packer defense really come alive, and I'm not really certain that the Bears, by making the coaching change, uh, offensive coordinator, is going to solve their issue right now. They have high-priced wide receivers. Their line is terrible. They can't run the ball very well. So that's their biggest issue. They're just not very – they're not conducive to be able to play uh, NFC North football. The line's incredibly tough. Packers pretty good at the line of scrimmage, and then the Vikings have proven that they're very, very tough. So the Bears don't fit there. They're probably going to be the last place team in that division, I would say, and uh, can't say I'm surprised by that whatsoever. Another team that's been a disappointment is the Cleveland Browns. You can hear that game right here on the Watchdog Network. It'll be the Browns at the New Orleans Saints right now. The Saints minus one, one and a half in most shops. 44 and a half is the total here. Browns coming off the bye week. They trade Zedarius Smith to the Lions. Uh, I have no idea what the Browns are going to be like here in this game. We talked to Kelsey Russo on Tuesday. She's not really sure. Nobody really is. I don't know what this is going to be like for the Browns. I'm thinking under is the play here. Jameis Winston's going to be going back there to New Orleans to try to show them a thing or two. And uh, I this the Saints team, they played pretty well last week, but I think they could take a slight setback. I would lean Cleveland. If I had to play a side here, I'd lean the Browns. I think there's going to be some pride there. Maybe they win this game, uh, but I like the game under the 44.5. I think uh, as much as I thought the Browns were going to be an over team, uh, I think both these teams have lost their edge a little bit and are probably just going to try to find a way to get a victory here, which may lead to a low-scoring game. The Rams off a disappointing performance. On, um, was it Sunday? Monday night football. Uh, Rams at the Patriots. Right now, the Rams minus four and a half, the total 43 and a half. I'll come back with the Rams here. New England's played pretty well the last couple of weeks. And, you know, while uh, we were one of the few people that gave you out New England over their win total, and I still believe in that bet, I think they're they're much improved. Drake May's done a nice job. And uh, I don't think they're terrible. And I think they'll still win some games. Not sure I like them here, though. I think the Rams maybe bounce back. Rams did not play well. They're red, they moved the ball between the 20s very well. Stafford could not score in the red zone. So too many field goals. I think they'll work on that, and uh, I think they get into the end zone a few times there against the Patriots. Maybe a small lean to the over in this game, too, for me. I think I know that's weird in a Rams and uh, New England game. I think the Rams will find the end zone a few times this week for sure, and uh, New England with Drake May, they are uh, going to be able to score some points. Another game I like over. Usually this is a dead under, but not anymore. You got Russell Wilson. You got Lamar Jackson. It is the Ravens at the Steelers. Steelers. Right now, catching three at home against the Ravens. I can't recommend to play on the Ravens. They just can't stop anybody. And as you saw last week, we've been touting in here for weeks upon weeks. Russell Wilson was so much better than Justin Fields. It's not even close. And I think you're starting to see that now. I think a lot of Steeler fans are probably coming around to it. Um, we talked about it here extensively on Better's Last Stand and on the Pine Room Watchdog Radio Show about how much better Russell Wilson is. It's not even close. He leads them to a great victory against the Redskins last week. They're playing really well. A lot of confidence. The Steeler defense is the one thing that I'd be a little bit worried about. They're not very good. They're just okay. And uh, TJ Watt, he could kind of be invisible. And uh, Redskins did a good job against him last week. But, hey, Russ made the plays when it mattered. Got the ball to Mike Williams. You saw that pay off already as the Steelers uh, continue to get him uh, acclimated with the offense and, and, and ready to go, you're going to have now two legitimate receivers. You had Pickens make an outstanding catch. You had Williams make an outstanding catch. Wilson has two good receivers now, which is one more than he had a few weeks ago. And the Steelers are playing with a lot of momentum right now. Ravens, Kyle Hamilton might not play in this game. Ravens are a mess. They can score. So I think over is the play here. I don't think either one of these teams uh, is going to be able to stop the other one. And uh, Lamar Jackson's had awful numbers against the Steelers, so you may even get a defensive score here. But Steelers, uh, we told you all along, I thought they were the best team in the division by default if Wilson played, and they're starting to show that they are. The Ravens just can't stop anybody. They're the Miami, Florida of uh, of the NFL. Ironically, I like both teams, so imagine that. Uh, maybe we all should upgrade uh, on the defensive side of the ball at both Miami and uh, with the Ravens, but I like over 48 in uh, CC. Yeah, it looks like 48's all across the board here so far for Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Las Vegas at Miami. Las Vegas, oh boy, where do they turn? They're going back to Minshew. Miami's got a little momentum, but Miami was not great the other night against the Rams. They were very, very lucky to have won that game. They, too, struggling in the red zone. Not great. Just not the explosiveness that you expect out of that offense with Tua. Right now, it's Miami minus 7, 7.5, seven 44 is the total. I'm going with the Raiders here. I think Minshew keeps them in the game. They hang around. They cover the 7.5. Jacksonville at Detroit. Detroit minus 14. 46.5 is the total. Saw some 47s out there as well. 
Lola's Lions, they're rolling right now. Great comeback win last week. Uh, this is the real deal team here. They're the best team in the NFC, in my opinion, uh, by a lot. They get Zadarius Smith now to help replace Aiden Hutchinson a little bit. Um, I think this is a really, really good team. I think they easily beat Jacksonville. I like the over in this game, though. I'm not certain they'll cover 14, but I think you see some points. I think both teams uh, can uh, can score a little bit, and this game is at Detroit, so I think you'll see a fast track, and uh, that could lead to an over 46 and a half, but I think the Lions easily roll there. I just can't recommend laying 14 in an NFL game. Minnesota, the Vikings on the road at the Tennessee Titans. Total, uh, total 39 and a half here. That's where I'm going to go, but the uh, Vikings are minus six. For this game, can't lay six on the road with the Vikings. Darnold's, uh, he, he's, he's had some rough goes of it here the last few weeks. Yeah, they did win, but turnovers have not been good for Sam. He hasn't protected the ball as well over the last few weeks, so I can't trust him, but I do like the under 39 and a half. Tennessee, gosh, I thought when they made the move to Mason Rudolph, he was going to stabilize him, and he really has not done that. So we're going under 39 and a half there, Titans and Vikings. Seattle at San Francisco, big division battle. Be Frisco minus six and a half and home. The total 48 here. I like Seattle here. This is a team that uh, is is battle-tested. I like the way that they're improving. Uh, they got to get a little bit better on offense. And uh, I, I think Mike McDonald has made a few gaffes so far, but it's his first time coaching. I'll give him a little bit of a pass. I didn't expect – we expected the Seahawks to be pretty good, but I wouldn't expect them to be a uh, powerhouse quite yet. I think this is a building, building block type team right now. But I like them here. I like them catching six and a half in a division game on the road. And uh, I'm not I'm not high on the 49ers. Like, yeah, they're a good team. They're a playoff team. They're going to win some games. But I saw a lot of bad things out of them last week. Kyle Shanahan, to me, is looks like a coach who's starting to to uh, fray apart like a bad old piece of rope. He's he just looks he looks uncomfortable over there. I think he knows that his team has challenges. They were terrible in the kicking game last week and uh, didn't capitalize on a lot of opportunities. Good team, not great team, San Francisco is. I'm going with Seattle plus a six and a half. A- Atlanta at Denver. Denver lets KC off the hook. They lay two and a half here, the total 44. Falcons, we told you they're not very good, and it showed last week against New Orleans. Denver played their butts off, probably should have won the game, but could not put Kansas City away. They get a field goal block late, and Mahomes just does enough to win. This spot says Denver to me. But I, I don't know. I'm I'm still very dubious of Denver. I know everybody's highly touting them right now, but let's calm it down with the Bo Nix for MVP stuff. A uh, small lean to the under in this game, but no real play for me. I'd lean Broncos, but don't love it. KC at Buffalo. Game of the week. Buffalo minus two at home. Total 46. Buffalo's went toe-to-toe with KC. Let them off the hook a few times. Um, it's a tough spot for both teams here, in, in my opinion. I think both teams come into the game with not their best performances last week by any means. So you figure maybe this plays to a, to a pretty good showing. Don't know what I think about the total here. Chiefs have been an under team, but when these teams get together, it seems like over. So I lean to the over, but I'm playing the Chiefs. No way I'm taking Mahomes plus points on the road. Uh, he can go in there. He can win anywhere. So Chiefs are the play for me, and it lean to the over. Cincinnati at the Chargers. Chargers minus one and a half, total 48. I don't understand this line. Should be about three. Uh, at least in my numbers, three for sure, and that's maybe even more. Cincinnati's not any good. We've seen it time after time. They can't make the plays they need to. They don't control the ball long enough to keep their defense off the field. Joe Burrow puts up all these fancy stats, and everybody tells me how great he is. But if you remember, Matt Stafford did the same thing for the Lions uh, way, way, way back, and uh, he had to prove to me that he's a winner, and he has. He uh, took the Rams to the Super Bowl and won it, so we'll see. Burrow can do that? Maybe. But Chase is the guy. He's the key to the whole team. He's the best player. In my, in my opinion, he's a top five player in the NFL. He's the best receiver in the NFL. He's better than Justin Jefferson. Uh, Jamar Chase is the lifeblood of the Bengal offense, and I don't think you're ever going to see Joe Burrow put up numbers like he has without Jamar Chase. He hasn't, and he won't. Uh, I like the Chargers here. I think they win this game easily for a Bengal team that is very, very average. Harbaugh will be ready for Burrow. I don't think you'll see the stats uh, that we have seen over the past few weeks. Indianapolis at the New York Jets. Jets minus four, total 44. I'm going against the grain on this one. I am going to play the Jets laying the four. I don't like it, but uh, Anthony Richardson's back in for the Colts, so figure the Jets will get at least a pick six or a turnover, a fumble six, although Flacco gave uh, one of those away last week for the Colts, and we had the Colts, so maybe Richardson's an upgrade at this point. Uh, I'll never really believe that, but you never know. So we're going Jets minus the four Monday Night Football. Houston at Dallas. Houston minus seven. Total 42 and a half. 
Dallas is just, they're done. They're finished. Prescott's finished. Big Mike's finished. Jerry's finished. Uh, it's all over for Dallas. So I'm going to under 42 here. I don't think Dallas even moves the ball at all on Houston, who has not been great on offense, not very sharp, a little bit of a sophomore slump for them with Stroud. Still a solid team, though, but they uh, desperately need Nico Collins back. A couple other NFL tidbits. Uh, just well, Actually, it's just one. Uh, Dan Campbell, 22-9 in, in home games. This dude's good, man. He covered spreads. And he's been very, very impressive for the Lions. And, you know, early on, people, even myself included, you know, we were a little, little uh, you know, questioning Dan Campbell. Is this guy for real? He kind of seems like a bozo. Uh, you know, what, what's, what's his deal? But he's proven us all wrong. The guy's a good coach. He gets his team to play really hard. And uh, you got to like what you're seeing if you're a Lions fan for sure. All right, let's switch it over to the college game here. Better's Last Stand show number 109 coming to you. From the Pine Room Watchdog Studio, unfortunately not getting you ready for Wheeling Central or Wheeling Park football tonight on WKKX and WVLY as the WVSSAC has suspended all the playoffs at this point, uh, pending injunctions and pending uh, appeals that have went all the way to the West Virginia Supreme Court. So we'll keep you posted. Stay right here on the Watchdog and on Metro News, uh, Metro News affiliate, uh, and you will find out what's going on and what's the latest. Hopefully we will have a... Um, solution to this issue very, very quickly because that's what it's going to take. We're already behind schedule. So let's see what happens with that. All right, college football tonight. We got games, a couple games. We got the UCLA Bruins at Washington. That one has Washington minus four at home, a total 46, 47 and a half, somewhere in that range. I see a bunch of ranging totals here. Uh, UCLA on a 6 0 and 1 ATS run. We had them last week. I told you UCLA is improving, and I like them here as well. I'll take the Bruins. On the road, plus the four. I think they hang around with Washington. Washington's solid, but not great. UCLA is improving. They are a drastically better team than they were early in the season, and you can watch that each and every week. So that's a good sign. To me, if you're finding a way to improve your team each and every week in college football, you're doing something right. So I'm on UCLA. We'll take the Bruins plus the points on the road tonight. Houston at Arizona also tonight. Arizona on an 8-1 and one ATS run. How about that one? The one that they didn't cover was West Virginia. Heard that one right here on the Watchdog. Arizona minus one and a half to total 46. Don't know what I like here. I don't really like Houston. I'll probably lay the point with Arizona, play the money line with them. I'll take them at home. I'm still not very sold on Houston. I don't think they're a bad team, but not a great one. All right, Saturday action. Marshall now an eight and a half point favorite, up from the opener of seven and a half to total 57 against Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina off a nice win. Marshall off a nice win. Ah, boy, I kind of like the under in this game. I think that that's the, the spot to go. Coastal was bene benefited from some mistakes last week uh, in their game against App State. So, uh, and Marshall, a pretty sound defensive team. They had a nice cigar-smoking winner for us last week here on Better's Last Stand. So we'll go under in Coastal Carolina and Marshall. Florida Atlantic and Temple. It'll be Temple minus three, total 51.5. No real play on that one for me. I'd lean Temple on that one. Big game here, SEC battle, Texas. Maybe the second best team they've played all season. Texas on the road, minus 13 and a half at Arkansas. Pig Suey and Pig Suey hang around here with Texas. The total for this one, 57 and a half. I see some 58s out there. That's where I'm going. I'm trying to find one of these 58s, and I'm going to play this game under. I think Arkansas can give Texas some problems. Again, I think Texas is a playoff team. By all means, I do. But. Are they as high as are they as good as where they're rated? Absolutely not. They've really not beat anybody. But we're going to go under in this game. I think this is a tight game. Small lean to Arkansas, but I could see Texas maybe winning this game by like 17 points. So let's uh, let's take a shot for something like a 31-14 type final for Texas would keep it under. That makes me a little bit leery about Arkansas. If I was going to able to get 14, I probably would play them. But I can't chance it, so we're going to go under in the Longhorns and Pig Suey. Wake Forest on the road at North Carolina. North Carolina minus 11 in this game, a total 64. No play here. Two really bad teams. Don't really know what to make of ACC. It's just, just one garbage team after another. So we'll go with the uh, pass on that one, which is uh, always a safe play. Sometimes a pass can be your very, very best bet when it comes down to it. Uh, Louisiana Tech at Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky, pretty good offensively. This is a big game for their conference here. Uh, they lay 13.5 at home against LA Tech. I like the over in this game. I think you can find some 53s out there. There's some 54s as well, but look for that 53 go over in Tech in Western Kentucky. West Virginia Baylor. I had to look twice at this one. I can't believe that Baylor's favored on the road here. Now, Baylor's been a lot better in recent weeks, but they're not very good. 
Uh, they've they've not played a high quality uh, schedule, and they're laying two and a half on the road here at Morgantown. And you know, I'm not the big Mister Mountaineer supporter here by any means at all. But I like the Mountaineers in this game, catching two and a half at home. They had a nice win on the road. This does. I will say though, the spot is a concern. They go on a, on the road last week and beat Cincinnati, which I was surprised at. And now coming back home, that can be very tricky. But my my eye test says the Mountaineers are the better team. You can hear that game right here on the Watchdog as well. Four o'clock kickoff, uh, Bears at Mountaineers. So got to come up with a better alternative. If, I, if I'm worried about the spot, but I like the Mountaineers, then that's, uh, i got to play a total here. And I like the game under a little bit. I think the Mountaineers would do a better job of controlling the clock they have in recent weeks. And uh, we're going to go under the 59 in that game. But I lean the Mountaineers. I think they got a good good shot of winning that game. Tulane at Navy. Navy finally gets back into it. Gets a win last week for us. A nice, easy win. It'll be Tulane minus 7 on the road. Total 53. It's a really big game right here. Thinking the over might be the best play here. I kind of lean Navy, but... Tulane's, Tulane's solid, so I uh, don't love Navy. I like them, and we're going to go over the 53. Clemson at Pitt. Pitt, two-game losing streak. What's going on? Clemson laying 10 on the road. You don't go into Akershire Stadium on a Saturday and be able to push Pitt around, although Virginia did last week. Uh, I like Pitt here. I think they bounce back 10.5. If you can find that, take it. Clemson, just so-so. I think this could also lend itself to being a pretty high-scoring affair, so I think over the 54 could be in play. Ohio State at Northwestern. Ohio State land 28 and a half. Total 44, 44 and a half. This is a bloodbath. Name the score. Ohio State just can't wait till they play Indiana here coming up. Rutgers at Maryland. Rutgers off a nice cover for us last week. Actually, they might have won that game outright against Minnesota. Uh, tough spot here for them now to go back on the road against Maryland. Catching six. Total 51 and a half. I like the under in this game. Maybe a small lean to the Terps here. But under 51 and a half is where I'll go. Rutgers. We'll have to control the ball to stay in the game. Penn State, nice win for us last week. Minus 29 on the road at Purdue. Again, name the score. Saw Ohio State destroy Purdue last week. It'll be the same for Penn State this week. Auburn has their uh, token SEC bye week as they take on Louisiana Monroe. Don't count Louisiana Monroe out from covering 24 and a half against Auburn, but we shall see. Moving it along, uh, BYU hosting Kansas. BYU minus two and a half, total 56 and a half. Kansas has played a little bit better. Keep thinking BYU is going to stub their toe here at some point, but I'm not sure this is the spot. Uh, I, I like BYU in the game, and I like the under 56 and a half. Louisville at Stanford. Louisville minus 20 and a half on the road. Total 58 in this game. I like Louisville. I don't like laying the, those kind of points on the road, but I lean Cardinals. I think Stanford, although I have them on the win total, I really need them to figure out a way to win a couple games here late to have a chance at this. It's not looking good. They've they've kind of hit the skids, and uh, I'd be very worried about the Stanford Cardinal against the Louisville Cardinal here. Uh, could be pretty ugly. So we'll go with Louisville on the road, laying the points. Don't like it, but uh, you know have to do it just because Stanford's been so bad. Syracuse at Cal, ACC clash. Nothing says ACC like Syracuse and California. California minus nine on the at home. Now I see there's eights out there. There's eight and a half. There's nines and there's nine and a half. So. A lot of variation here with this number, so find the best one whatever side you're playing here. Total 57, 56 and a half. That looks a little bit more stable, but I'm going with the Golden Bears here. I like the way that they've played all season. They're a team like UCLA that's improved. Record should be better than it is. They keep getting better. Syracuse outside that dome, uh, I can't trust them. And that coach of theirs, he's a little bit off. I uh, heard some of his quotes this past week. He's a strange cat. So we're going with California at home to roll, roll, roll and crush Actually, let's juice the orange, squeeze the orange. SMU hosting Boston College. SMU getting no love right now in the playoffs. 18.5 point favorite to total 54. BC off a nice win last week at home. They go on the road and they get stomped this week. This is my best bet of the week. It will be SMU minus the points against Boston College. This Mustang team, very, very, very talented. Look out for them if they do make it into the playoff. I'm not sure they can be tough enough to beat some of the big boys, but they are fun to watch. Tennessee at Georgia. Georgia minus nine and a half. You can even find some tens and tens and a halfs out there. Tennessee on the road, 48 is the total. Maybe the under is the player. Tennessee's defense has been pretty good all season. Georgia, wow, Carson Beck, he's a train wreck right now. I, I don't know. I haven't seen a guy fall off this much in a long time. He's uh, he's seeing ghosts, goblins, cats, bats, something. Uh, something's off here with, uh, with Beck. I can't lay it with Georgia. I think they'll win this game, but I cannot lay 10, 10 and a half, nine even. Probably lean to Tennessee and the under in that one, but Georgia needs that bounce back spot really, really badly. 
to uh, have any prayer. You can't take a take can't take another loss and then think you're going to be you know then have to leave it in the hands of that playoff committee. Oregon at Wisconsin, Big Ten showdown. Oregon minus fourteen, total fifty one. Oregon, I tell you, early on I was telling you they were an, they were an under team. Well, that's changed. They've uh, they've really been putting the points up lately. Maybe that continues here. Small lean to the over here. I like the Ducks too. I think they're just so much better than Wisconsin, who has really laid an egg in every big game they've had a chance to perform in. Texas A and M also has their SEC bye week. They take on New Mexico State. They're laying forty at Kyle Field. Probably going to be a slaughter. I'd probably lean to the over in this game, but no real play. And then San Diego State at UNLV, the nightcap. UNLV minus 21, the total 54 in this game. I like the under in this game. I think uh, both these teams run the ball a good bit. We're going to go under San Diego State and UNLV. A couple other college tidbits. We're going back to the UCLA play. Bruins 6 0 1 ATS. I think I already said that, but let's reiterate. That is an important thing. West Virginia on a 31-16 and 16 ATS run. So they've been doing pretty well spread-wise. BYU on an 8-2 and two ATS run. Stanford, told you there's trouble. The Cardinals are in big trouble here and could get crushed by Louisville. They are 0-5-1 in their last six against the spread. South Carolina, now that's a game I missed. I don't know how I missed that game. South Carolina, Missouri, I thought was an interesting game. And for whatever reason, I can't find find it on my paper but South Carolina to me is a team that uh they're they're better than I thought they were. like I knew they were pretty good at home but they're they're starting to show that they're actually really good overall they're seven and one ATS uh they're on a seven and one ATS run so keep an eye on that they may still be a team that uh can uh, be a cover team down down the road just about every time Cincinnati on the road at Iowa State the visiting team in the Iowa State games over the last 15. The visitors are 12 in three ATS, so maybe a lean towards the Bearcats there on the road off of a bad loss to the Mountaineers last week, if you ask me. Uh, Illinois entering this game against Michigan State off a of bye week. They've dropped uh, two, two straight prior to the bye week. So, how will Bielema have his team in, uh, you know, what kind of form will Bielema's team be in heading into this week's game against Michigan State? I don't know what to expect there. That's that's a tough one to figure out. Bielema has always been a guy to me that's that's a, a marvel. I, I've never really understood. And here's the other page that I was missing. I knew we didn't get through all the games. There we go. Here we go. I found the missing link. Uh, the Irish of Notre Dame. We're going to talk about them here in a moment. They host uh, Virginia this week. The Irish on a really good 17-2 and ATS run, but they did lose in Northern Illinois, who's not very good in the MAC. All right, here's Missouri and South Carolina. South Carolina minus 14 there's some 12s, 12 and a halves and 13s out there as well. Total 44. Uh, I'd go over in this game. I think South Carolina at home, very, very good. Very impressive so far to me. They were good last week on the road, and uh, I like South Carolina in uh, to score some points here, so we go over 44. Cincinnati and Iowa State talked about the run of Iowa State, the teams on the road against the Cyclones. Maybe this is a spot for Cincinnati to bounce back, catching nine and a half on the road to total 53. So we're going to lean Bearcats. Hopefully that bumps up to a 10, and that'll be a must play for me. Uh, we'll see if Cincinnati can get back on track after a bad loss to the Mountaineers. Virginia at Notre Dame. Notre Dame minus 23. 50 and a half is the total. I like the over in this game. Virginia showed they could score a little bit. They've, they've actually surprised me. Their offense is a little bit better than what it has been in previous years. So I think 50 and a half is a little bit low here. Notre Dame offense, they're trying to just pound as many teams as possible to make everybody forget about that Northern Illinois defeat, which I don't blame them. Uh, that can happen to anybody, and you want to try to make people forget that as quick as possible. Memphis, minus 14. They didn't get it done for us last week. They host UAB, 62.5 is the total there. Can't lay 14 in a conference game. No chance it will pass on that one. Oregon State at Air Force. Oregon State, minus 3.5 in this one at Air Force. Uh, 45 is the total. Air Force is really bad. But Oregon State's pretty bad, too. I lean under in that game, but no real play. Utah at Colorado. Colorado, wow, how about them? They may be a playoff team. They're laying 12 at home against Utah. Utah, where do I begin with them? They disappointed us all season long. They ruined our future tickets, uh, lots of tickets we had on Utah and various things. Just a disaster. Just been a disaster. So I think Colorado will crush them. And, um, yeah. That's about it. LSU at Florida. LSU coming off of a tough, tough loss to Alabama. They were awful in that game. They lay four on the road at the Swamp. I don't know what Brian Kelly's going to get out of his team. They looked pretty bad and pretty off and uh, very frustrated uh, early on in that game. 
at Death Valley last week. It was a really, really un LSU like performance. Florida comes in off the bye. They had uh, Georgia the week before. They battled, they battled, they battled. Uh, I kind of like under in this game. I think Florida's defense will still play pretty hard. Florida's down to their third string quarterback, I think, in LSU. To me, offensively, a lot of turnovers, and uh, I don't trust them. So we'll go under 55 in that one. Arizona State at K State. K State minus eight, total 50. Can't play K-State minus the eight here, so I'm going to go Arizona State or nothing, but I don't love anything in that game. Michigan State at Illinois. We talked about Illinois. Uh, they were 0-2 heading into the bye week. What would they be like off the bye week? These Both these teams, to me, very, very average at best. So we're going to go under 48 in Illinois and Michigan State in a pretty tightly played game, but a very boring game. Boise State and San Jose State. Boise did not play well last week, and uh, they're, uh, they're wanting to be that that non-Power 5 team in the playoff, they got to pick it up. San Jose State's really not very good. So I think Boise maybe gets back on track here. I do like the over 61 in this game. And I think Boise probably covers that 14, but not really wild about land 14 on the road. Nebraska at USC, it will be the uh, men of Troy, minus nine against Nebraska. The total 50. Both these teams have had disappointing seasons, to say the least. Um yeah, Jaw Rule and uh, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley's team looking like some probation. They're probably looking a way to get out of that contract if you're USC. And uh, both these teams are very, very big disappointments here. And I really don't know what to do with this game. It's a it's a tricky one. Tricky, tricky game. Maybe under 50, but no strong play for me there. Uh, all right, that concludes the college football rundown. Uh, let's see, what other notes do I have? Oh, Louisville and Stanford, first ever meeting. I, I don't think that's a big a big surprise to anybody. The Cardinal and the Cardinals uh, now playing in the same uh, same residence, same actual conference, if you can believe it. Stunning. But uh, this realignment is quite crazy. All right, that's uh, winding it down here on Better's Last Stand. We went through our NFL Week 11 plays, recapped a little bit about Week 10, same with college football Week number 12. Went through our NHL First periods and third periods and second periods and all that good stuff. Uh, very little NBA talk. Again, we were up 29.55 units last week. So strong week for us. Joey Logano cashes a nice ticket for us. We got the Toronto Argonauts live in Canadian football. So we look forward to that one to see if they can take home the Grey Cup. Not sure they'll be able to do that, but we'll give it a shot. And uh, the uh, racing season, as we said, NASCAR done, F1 in the books, or F1 with three races left. IndyCar finished up a few weeks ago. Uh, soccer, we're off this week in the EPL and the Champions League. So if you want to catch the full version of this show, again, you can visit pineroomstudios.com. Check it out. You can find out our fun blogs on there from all the Pine Room guys. You can find all of our shows in uh, full length. And uh, you can check back the Better's Last Stands, previous versions that we do uh, each and every week here. Now, we will be in studio next week. For Better's Last Stand, but then Thanksgiving week, we will not have a show. So get ready for that. We'll post all of our stuff at BLS underscore PRP. Post all the picks there, the earlies, the lates, the mids, whatever it is. Whatever times they are, whatever plays we have, we put up there. So you can follow those all the time. Visit at the Pine Room Studios on social media. Follow us on there. Instagram and uh, X and all that good stuff. Keep apprised of all things going on in the Pine Room Studios here as we head towards the holiday season. Oh, yay. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there, which we'll talk more about next week with, uh, give you a little bit of a preview of some Thanksgiving things that I like without having a show on Thanksgiving Friday. And, uh, let's see what other reminders. Oh yes, this is presented to you by the Brownie house. Visit them at yesbrownies.com today, 20% off your order. You can get that by using the promo code pine room at checkout. This is the time of year you want to share with family and friends, share goodies going to want to share those brownie house brownies they are delightful so get over to yesbrownie.com today and get your order in there and again thanks to gumby's and jill's gentlemen's club for sponsoring football fridays unfortunately we had a lot of football talk but we didn't have any football games here on the watchdog network as west virginia still sorting out this playoff mess with the wvssac and the supreme court of the state of west virginia we hopefully will have some more news for you on uh, monday or tuesday on the pine room uh, watchdog radio show so stay tuned then. Uh, this is getting talked about everywhere, so you can hear about it on Howard's show. You'll hear about it on Hoppy's show. All the shows that you can hear right here on the Watchdog Network, they'll be talking about the high school football playoffs. Hopefully we'll have Wheeling Park and Wheeling Central in action uh, a week from tonight, but no guarantees. We got Ohio uh, in action tonight. We talked about those earlier. We'll recap you on the Ohio playoffs uh, early next week. 
and get you ready for another Football Fridays presented by Gumby's and Jill's Gentlemen's Club here on the Watchdog Mountaineer Football. Again, tomorrow they take on Baylor at 4 o'clock right here on the Watchdog Network and then the Browns and the Saints at 1 o'clock on Sunday. That's going to do it for us. Better's Last Stand, show number 109 from the Pine Room Watchdog Studios. Uh, I don't know what recording or what program is coming up next. It should be high school football, but unfortunately it is not. Uh, until then, we will see you next week on Better's Last Stand for show number 1010. Get you uh, ready for some Thanksgiving action as well. So that'll do it for us here in the Pine Room Watchdog Studios. Until next week, have a great weekend and good luck with your wagers.